a question specific for Alabama with regards to OT and PT, but this would be applicable uh, throughout the United States. The, every state is required to follow the minimal federal standard, but the states are allowed to enhance uh, and provide more. And also, the rules might be a little bit different with regards to the nuances, but on the whole, on, a, on the broad uh, concepts, what I'm about to explain would be, you know, relevant uh, nationwide, okay? Now, with regards to Alabama, yes, they are required to provide occupational therapy and physical therapy, speech language therapy, psychological services, counseling. I mean, we can go through the entire list, uh, which is pretty expansive inside the law if you find it, and also within the state regulations on what would be considered uh, a related service. Now, what is a related service? It's a service that relates back to your child's educational performance deficits. Now, what are educational performance deficits? Well, that would be the big three, all right? That would be academics, social emotional development, including behavior, and communication. Now, depending on the severity or the needs of your child, it could also include functional skills. Depending on the age of your child, if your child's ninth grade or 14, it can include transition services. All those are educational performance areas. And so related services would need to relate back to deficits in any of those edu in educational performance areas. And that's how you determine whether or not a child um, would qualify uh, you know, and, and it's not really a qualification, uh, you know, like you would be required to do to, uh, let's say, initially qualify for an IEP. The analysis on whether your child would benefit from a related service is a little bit different for the IEP team. So in many, many cases that I have, I will end up busting a school system trying to apply a discrepancy standard uh, with regards to requiring a student, let's say speech language uh, pathology, requiring a student to meet a score in order to qualify for speech language services. No, no, because the standard is, does the child's need in this area as a related service benefit the child in any of the educational performance areas to where their the child's ability to progress in, in any of their educational performance area is contingent on these related services to where this is where progress is going to occur, but this is needed over here in order to help boost that, okay? So occupational therapy, physical therapy, absolutely. And if you believe that your child already has an IEP and would meet that standard, and the school system says, well, we, got to, we need to evaluate in these areas. Okay, all right, but why hasn't it been done? Now, there are some school districts that they'll require a prescription from a doctor uh, for occupational therapy or for physical therapy. Um, is that technically required? No, but at the same time, you know, do some school districts request that you have that? Um, as part of the analysis, yeah, I just don't ever, you know, encourage a parent to to make a mountain out of a molehill on something like that. It's not that difficult to get a script for occupational therapy or PT. Um, you know, it's actually a lower threshold, quite frankly, than than you know what some schools apply uh, with regards to their willingness to provide those services. Uh, you said that your child's in a um, pre-K or K three. And so that would tell me that your child's three years old, which means that your child just became eligible for an IEP. And that happens, early intervention is, is birth to three years old, okay? That's early intervention. Then when the child turns two and a half, they're supposed to, the transition agency, early intervention is supposed to hook up and have a meeting with you, with early intervention and your public school system six months prior to your child turning uh, three years old. That way, you can give your consent for the school system to evaluate, and they have six months to sit there and fully evaluate and know exactly what your child needs and requires. And then before their third birthday, you're, they're supposed to develop an IEP, and in the development of that IEP, that three-year-old IEP, 
They should have already done PT, OT, speech language, and made those determinations. There is no get to know you clause in, in the law. And so many schools are sitting there going, well, you know, we'll, we'll build the IEP and then we'll get to know the child and we'll, we'll do all that stuff later. Mm-mm. No, that's not how that works. And what a school does is they're running the risk of a parent challenging your bad decisions. And then the parent would be entitled to remedial services for those things that the school system should have provided. The decision should have been made prior to the third birthday. Okay, that's your specific situation. Now, that's true year to year. All right. Anytime a, an IEP is developed, then, then the IEP team, including the parent, is putting their stamp of approval saying this will provide a free and appropriate public education. And that would include related services like occupational therapy and physical therapy. You can't kick the can and say, well, we'll evaluate later. Special education is a year round commitment. 12 months, including Christmas break, including summers. But I have too many school systems that will kick the can and tell the parents, well, well, we'll just evaluate in the fall. No, the school system is running the risk of a due process complaint, a state complaint, a request for mediation, or a complaint with the Office of Civil Rights every time they do stuff like that. You know, and how do you keep yourself as a school out of trouble? You just follow the stinking law. And you evaluate and you consider and you have the IEP team consider whether the child would benefit from physical therapy or occupational therapy as it relates back to any of their educational performance deficits. It's really not that difficult. All right. But that is what you would need. And if you are having problem after problem after problem after problem with that school system, send me a private message. Let me know what's going on. And if you're in Alabama, uh, maybe I, maybe we know some additional insight. And what I'm saying is that uh, when you get this and when you watch it, send me a private message. Let me know which school system you're in. Maybe I have some additional insight that would be specific for where you live. All right. Maybe we can help you. But, you know, you might want to take this information back. Um, <clears throat> But that doesn't necessarily mean that your school system is going to roll over and go, well, you know, we should have, we, yeah, you're right, we should have done this stuff. Especially if you're already having issues uh, with safety, with regards to your child's safety. Okay? Unfortunate, but uh, this should have been done. And that this, I'm not saying that your child, you know, outright should be getting OT and, and PT. But what I'm saying is that they should have already been done with the process of evaluation so that the IEP team can make a decision and a consideration on whether or not it relates to your child's uh, um, educational performance area in order for your child to receive a FAPE. Okay?